Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to have a look at the starter set for Project Z. It feels weird to say Z because it's pronounced Z. Oh well. Anyway, this is a zombie miniatures game from Warlord, the same people who make Bolt Action. I have had this box for a few months, but I'm only just now getting around to opening it and checking it out. I haven't played the game yet of course, but I am hoping to sort out a game with at least one person once I have the models built. As the back of the box tells us, this game can be played with up to three players though, which I think is pretty cool. But for now, I'm just going to have a look at the game materials and build some of the models pictured on the box, and also presumably included inside the box. Inside the box we get this thick cardboard sheet of tokens and markers. There's also a ruler, just in case you don't have your own measuring devices. Having not played the game I can't really tell you what all of these are for, but they're here and they look to be perfectly adequate. I would have preferred acrylic tokens and markers if I were given a choice, but I suspect that would drive the price up quite a bit. Maybe Warlord will release a special token set at some point. At any rate, these will do the trick just fine for now. We probably wouldn't be able to play without the rules, so this rule book is included. It's obviously not a fancy hardcover rule book or anything like that, and it's only a few pages long, but to me that indicates a game that's not overly complex and should be easy to pick up. All the things you might expect to see in a rule book seem to be there. In addition to this rule booklet we get this survivor's guide for dummies, which is perfect for me. This talks about creating your team of survivors or motorcycle gangers and some special rules for each. It also outlays a handful of scenarios, so your games of Project Z won't be the same every time. There's also a section on special traits for various things, and on the back you'll find a weapons chart featuring all manner of armaments. Also included are two of these game sequence and weapon summary pages. I like that there are more than one of these so you and your opponent can have your own reference sheets. All of these are actually available as free PDFs on Warlord's website. This is nice if you happen to lose them or if perhaps you just prefer your rules and references to be digital. There's also a baggie of 10 dice. These are combat dice and instead of numbers or pips they have three icons relating to combat in the game. There's also a stack of cards. I don't rightly know how these work yet, but there are varying numbers of these six cards. They only have these icons and the box art on the back. There are also several survival cards and, well, you might see a small problem here. I think the bottom set of cards are gang cards of some kind, but I don't speak French. I did make sure to order the English Project Z starter box, but somewhere along the way a French set of cards was put into my box. I did contact Warlord and they were very quick to respond. Despite me having the box unopened for months, they're sending out some cards in English, which I think is very nice. This is definitely not the first time I've received good customer service from Warlord. Big thumbs up for that. There's also a sprue of bases in this box. That's pretty exciting, but wait, that's not all. There's another four sprues of figures. I'm not going to have an in-depth look at the first three, there'll be more videos about them later. But out of interest, the first one is a sprue of male zombies. This includes an arm with what appears to be an IV stand with the IV line still attached to the arm. I think that's awesome. There is also this sprue of female zombies. It's nice to see women represented in games too, even if they are terrifying brain-eating women. And then we have this sprue of motorcycle gangers or as we would call them in Australia, bikies. I'm assuming that the sprue of round bases is for these. And finally we have this sprue of male survivors. We'll have a bit of a closer look at these and I'll put a couple together. The plastic parts in this box are made by Wargames Factory and they do look pretty good. The detail is fairly neat and crisp. The mould lines are kind of pronounced, and some figures have a line down the side that I think is meant to represent the seams in their clothes, though they do look like huge mould lines. They're not, though there are some mould lines that run along the top of those seams. They should be easy enough to clean up and they're not that bad, considering. The only places they might be a real problem is in some of the fingers and nooks on the guns. There's a lot of different random weaponry on the arms on this sprue and I quite like that. Obviously this is a group of random survivors, maybe some kind of local militia but nothing too organised, so you're not likely to be seeing groups all armed with the same sort of gun or anything like that. I quite like the variety and I especially like that there's a chainsaw. 
The parts on all these sprues are labelled. Certain arms are supposed to go with certain bodies, and some of them look like they're shaped specifically for those bodies only. Unfortunately, because this box doesn't include any instructions, it might not be immediately obvious that this is the case. I'm sure if you wanted, you could mix and match any way you liked, though it might require a little bit of extra work to get the parts to fit. I found instruction diagrams on the Warlord site, and I'll include a link to those in the description. There's an image of a second sprue on that instruction sheet that I didn't find in my box. I think this might be specific to the standalone male survivor's box. There are a lot of heads on this sprue, also labelled for specific bodies, but they look like you would easily be able to use any head with any of the bodies. Some of these are quite entertaining to look at. Okay, let's put some of these together. I'm going to use this selection of parts to make a chainsawman. Most of these figures comprise of only four or five parts, which keeps things pretty simple. There aren't really any additional detailing parts except for a pistol holster and some arrows for the crossbow. The first thing I do, like with most figures, is to drill a hole into one of the feet. I choose the most vertical leg or whichever is thickest. I drill as central to the leg as I can. You don't want the bit to come ripping out of the model's shin. It's kind of hard to explain and annoying to fix. I drill in a fair way, but not too deep. Later, a piece of brass rod will be glued into this hole. I use that as a holder for painting the figure and then to help secure the finished model to the base. Then I remove the mould lines from all the parts. The most time consuming part in putting these together is going to be removing the mould lines. That's true of pretty much every figure though, not specific to these models. I usually do this kind of thing while watching streams. It can actually be kind of relaxing, in an odd way. I then glue the arms on. I like to start with the arm holding the weapon. Position it so it looks sensible in relation to the body. In this case, holding the chainsaw up as though he's about to bring it down on a zombie. And then the other arm. This should be holding the chainsaw, but not by the blade, for some reason. This is a little fiddly to make the join at the shoulder look good as well as have the hand holding the chainsaw, but it can be done. I try to do this before the glue on the weapon arm is completely set so it can still be manipulated if need be. The join isn't perfect, they seldom are, but it's not too bad at all. Time for the head. This is not the one labelled for this specific body, but it is a lot more entertaining. That's why I've used it. It takes a little bit of fiddling and nudging, but eventually I'm satisfied with it and that's one chainsawman completed. This is quite a dramatic looking model. He's not just holding the chainsaw going rin nin nin nin, look at me, I've got a chainsaw. He's in the process of going ham with it. Very cool. Only nine more of these guys to build. What I did while building these is decide which figures I wanted to build, clip out the relevant parts for each of them, and then put them in a plastic shot glass because you've got to keep them separated. Let's have a look at a couple more. This body with the edgelord coat comes in two parts and is the only body on this sprue that does so. It should be a simple matter of gluing the halves together. It wasn't, though it wasn't too tricky. I just had to scrape a bit of plastic from the rear of the leg so that it would sit further back under the torso. I also applied a bit of pressure here to ensure the parts bonded as closely as possible. There's still a bit of a gap there, but the lower body doesn't stick out unrealistically now, and the gap can be explained away as the space between the shirt and the top of the belt. Not too bad, really. Then it's time to arm him. I give him this arm with the M16. It fits pretty neatly onto this body, there's not much of a gap there at all. Unfortunately, I forgot to test fit these arms, and so I didn't realise that the left arm wouldn't actually end up holding the gun, no matter which way I twisted or turned it. In this case, it actually worked out okay, and I'm glad I didn't try pulling it off because that would have made a huge mess. Then I attach the head. I think this one fits best with the rest of this body. Nudge it around a little bit so it makes sense, and he's done. Nice and quick. Look at this guy. He's quite the edgelord. He's probably going to hurt himself as soon as he pulls that trigger, but at least he looks cool. This next fellow is an angry cricket batman. The weapon arm looks just about as simple as the previous two models. The left arm, not quite so much. It looks very specific to this model. Though maybe you could use arms intended for other figures too. I'm not sure, I didn't try. On this figure, or any with raised arms and weapons like that, I would suggest adding the head before adding the second arm. Otherwise it might become quite fiddly and annoying to get the head into place. I then add the left arm, making sure to also glue it to the handle of the cricket bat. 
The result is quite cool, at least in my opinion. This guy looks like he's really viciously attacking a zombie. Or maybe he's just really enthusiastic about cricket. Don't know what cricket is? You've got to know what a crumpet is to understand cricket. There's also a very similar set of arms wielding a baseball bat. I figure this is for Americans. So I guess that's enough assembly. All of these guys go together in a very similar way, and I'm sure you don't need to watch me put them all together. These are some very easy models to build and for the most part they look really good. They have a minimum of gaps needing to be filled later and I think they'll look really interesting when they're painted. These actually look like random civilian guys that you might find forming militias or whatever to kill zombies. The poses are interesting and full of action. I think they tell a tale quite effectively. That tale is, I sure do love murdering zombies. I rather like that there's a lot of variety in this kit. Not all the figures are the same looking. They're not all muscly tough guys. In fact, one of them is quite a fatty. There's also a young guy with an SMG, which says to me everyone is doing their part in the apocalypse. So far, I have very few complaints about this box set. The models go together nicely and are pleasant to build. The main complaint I had is being rectified and replacement cards are being sent. So fortunately, I don't need to learn French to play the game. I suppose it would have been nice to have the figure assembly diagrams included in the box, but that's not essential at all. I will include a link to those if anybody wants them anyway. I found them kind of helpful. I will be building the bikers and zombies from this starter set in the coming weeks. I also got a box of female survivors when I bought this set because there was a deal and I thought they would be cool. The apocalypse is inclusive of all genders. So if those interest you, keep an eye out. So, my conclusions without having played the game in this starter set are that it looks good, seems like a fairly simple game, and it should be quick to set up and play. And I rather like that you can have more than two players. The most important thing, at least to me, is that the models are really cool. I am, after all, more of a modeler than a gamer. What do you think? Have you got Project Z yourself, or do you plan on getting it? Let me know in the comments section below. And of course, don't forget to do things like subscribing here on YouTube and following me on social media. Check the links in the description to find me. If you really like the things I do, please consider helping to support the channel over at Patreon. Patrons get to see my videos a bit early along with some patron-only bonus content and of course access to the patron-only Discord channel. I shall return soon, so until then, happy zombie killing and thanks for watching. Farewell.